I bring special greetings to all my listeners, men and women who are interested in sharing from the Word of God. And I want to appreciate you especially for finding time to get this step and for finding time to sit down or stand up or maybe listen to this step. I just appreciate you. I, you are so wonderful and um, my heart desire is that the Lord will bless you as you find, as you have time to listen to this message. Let's pray in a moment. Our dear Lord, we give you the glory, we give you the praise. We ask that you might bless us through your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is not a blessing at all that you marry a wife that will say yes to every opinion of yours. It's not a blessing. It is not also a blessing that you as a woman, your husband will say yes to every demand, everything that you want, every desire of yours. It's not a perfect blessing. It is not a blessing that you have a pastor that says yes to everything you say. You know, naturally men like people who will become oh yes members. Oh yes, ma'am. Anything you say, they will say yes. Anything you say, they will say yes. People like such. I really want us to thumb through the passages of the Holy Read this day. And begin to look at this thing from the light of the scripture. I want to share a message with you. You know, no is golden. No is golden. Of course, for you to maintain your integrity, you have to say no sometime. Can you look at your neighbor and point at your neighbor at this moment? Tell your neighbor, you can say no. Tell your neighbor, you can say no. Tell your neighbor, you can say no. Oh yes. That's the message I want to share with you this day. You can say no. I, I, I want to share with you from the book of Genesis. Turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 16. I want to read from Genesis, chapter 16, from verse 1. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maid whose name was Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, Now behold, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Please, go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children through her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarah. I know many a time you listen to messages that are fantastic. Preachers will tell you, God will butter your bread, sugar your tea, come beef your rights. And you are rejoicing. And you want to hit your head on the roof. Because of such wonderful promises. Let me tell you friend. It is not always like that. You might begin to think that. Immediately after this prophetic utterances. That somebody will meet you outside the gate. And give you a check of 10 million. But it is not always like that. It is not always like that. Not always like that. Our problem is that. I know God will do it. But he will do it at his own time. Habakkuk said, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. I don't want to get into this because I know that it is one of my terms titled The Appointed Time. But there's an aspect I want to bring to your focus this day. Abraham had no child. They waited and waited and waited for the fulfillment of God's promise. Abraham waited for six months. The body of Sarah did not change. One year, her body did not change. Ten years, her body did not change. You know as well as I know that it took 25 years of waiting for God to give Abraham Isaac. But one of the most difficult things to do is to wait. It takes discipline to wait. It takes a big discipline to wait on God. Oh yes. It's not easy to wait. Oh. 
Especially, you know, when the Bible said, a thousand years before you, it's like, uh, what? A day before God. Now, let me go with you. Can we solve a little mathematics? If a thousand years before you, it's like a day before God. It means, 500 years before you, is what? Is 12 hours before God. It now means 250 years before you, is how many? Six hours before God. And then, 125, yeah, is it 125? 250 divided by 2. That's 125. 125 years before you is simply 45 minutes before God. Is it 45 minutes? Oh, yes. Now, let's take it again. Take it again. Just, just cool down with me and get into this simple arithmetic. 1,000 years before you is how many years before God? It's one day. Now, two, 500 years before you is what? 12 hours before God. Then, 250 years is 6 hours. Then, 125 is what? 3 hours. Now, 3 hours is 90 minutes. 125 divided by 2 is going to be 62 and a half years. 62 and a half years before you is just 45 minutes before God. Now, continue dividing it, descending and descending. You will discover. When you're saying, oh God, I've waited for 10 years, you've not done anything. The Lord may be saying, look at this guy. You've only waited for 10 minutes. You've only waited for 10 minutes and you're making noise. So, I don't know how long it will take, but I know that God will fulfill His promise unto you according, according, according to the promises He made. He must do that, but at His own time. The problem we run into is microwave mentality. We want it now, 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 but God has a fixed time. I have a prayer for you. May God not do it to you at your own time. May God do it at His own time. His time is the best. But look at the point we're trying to make this day. During the time of waiting, then came the voice of Sarah. Now, who is Sarah? Sarah was a beloved wife of Abraham. Sarah is somebody who respects his opinion. Sarah is somebody who finds it difficult to say no to. Sarah is somebody in your mentality, somebody you respect, Somebody that will be difficult for you to resist his idea. Then came the voice of Sarah. What did Sarah say? Abraham, you know the Lord has blocked, prevented me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Let me tell you the, the, how, the weight of this suggestion. If Abraham, well, let me say it this way. In extramarital relationship, apart from God, who else should you fear? It should be either your husband or your wife. But where the person you should ordinarily fear became the initiator, giving you the executive approval, say, my husband, I permit you, go into my maid. <laughs> now, let me tell you, how many of you, you normally get a vote thought coming to your house from time to time? Raise your hand, let me see. Evil thought. Even you, as a Christian, as a believer, sometimes evil thought come to your heart. Raise your hand, let me see. Okay. You know, if you must be practical, sincere, and transparent, nobody has outgrown evil thought flashing through your heart from time to time. But I know you will behave. You will not allow a bird you, to build a nest on your head. But you will never say that a bird will never fly across your head. So that is the way evil thought comes. You never allow a voter to build a nest on you. But sometimes it can flash. Funny things can even come into your heart. Something you will not be bold enough to share with people. Now, if Abraham had been on his own, meditating, and an evil thought came to him saying, Go into your maid. Go into Hagar. Go into Hagar. What will Abraham say? Abraham will say, Sarai, they are not here this. But church, we are Sarah became the initiator, giving executive approval to Abraham, saying, 
please my dear husband go into my mail now, now the bible said in verse 3 and after abraham had lived 10 years in the land of canaan abraham's wife sarai took hagar the egyptian her maid and gave her to her husband abraham as his wife i guess there's a picture i want to draw in your mind i, I want to i want to paint the picture here now listen to me it looks as if sarai took hagar physically probably to the door that door to the bedroom Open the door. I said, my husband, in case you thought I was just pulling your legs, I give it to you physically. Look at her. Take, possess, have, hold. And probably Sarah pushed the lady inside and locked the bedroom door. The Bible said, and Abraham listened to the voice of Sarah. Oh my God. Relevant to my topic. And Abraham said yes to Sarah. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a bedroom decision between the husband and the wife. But posterity is suffering that decision till today. They took the decision. It was a private affair. But posterity is still suffering. Now look at what happened. The Bible said, but when she saw that she had conceived, Sarah became despised. When I look at it, I, I, I see what I call the debit of corporate iniquity. The debit of corporate iniquity. You know, you got to be careful, though, because when you become partner, co-partner in crime, you will also be co-partner in receiving the debit of the iniquity that you committed corporately. Look at what happened. When this lady got pregnant, you can't eat your cake and have it. When she got pregnant, Sarah, the initiator, became despised. And look at what Sarah said to Abraham. Sarah said, uh, May the wrong done me be upon you. I gave my maid into your arms. But when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her sight. May the Lord judge between you and me. Uh, my, my beloved Listener, before the Lord will judge, Sarai and Abraham, who is to blame? Let's not carry the hammer, a sledgehammer, to hit Sarai. Abraham was supposed to be the chief priest of the family. Even if Sarai, as a weaker vessel, had made the suggestion, Abraham should have said the word, no. Listen, the ba Abraham, the Bible said, Abraham listened to the voice of Sarai, as if, oh, what I have been waiting for has come. He listened to the voice of Sarah. Listen to me attentively. I wish Abraham had rejected what Sarah said. Even if Sarah would not cook for him for seven days. No problem. But Abraham listened. He refused to say no. He said yes. To please Sarah. He said yes. And ladies and gentlemen, the moment he said yes, the consequence zoomed in. I was reading the Bible and the Bible said, Sarah drove Hagar out of the house. And to my greatest surprise, the angel of the Lord found her. You know, the angel of the Lord is not just an angel. The angel of the Lord has to do with Christophany. Which is the pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. Not just an angel. The angel of the Lord visited who? 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 If you call Hagar, you are too liberal. Angel of the Lord visited husband snatcher. Angel of the Lord visited husband snatcher. Somebody would have organized a special prayer squad in a corner praying. Husband snatcher, die by fire. Husband snatcher, you will not survive this pregnancy. Husband snatcher, die by fire. What are you waiting for? This pregnancy, you will not. Have. But the Bible says, an angel of the Lord. Let me talk to somebody listening right now. Your parents may say that you were an accident. They didn't want to get another child. When you came in, I want to announce to you, you are not an accident. You may be an accident to your parents, but you are not an accident to, to God. Let me tell you, God simply used them to bring you to this earth. And you are a full-fledged human being, created in the image of God, 
poised to fulfill a destiny. And let me tell you, listen to me this day. Um, even if you can't trust your father, they say you're a bastard. Even if you don't know the man who brought you to this earth, let me announce to you, you are not an accident. The man was just an instrument in the hand of God to bring you to this earth. And he has finished what the assignment God has him to do. You don't even know God. That's your problem. God is a converter. He is a converter. It can be a rough life. It can be a mistake. They may be having good time illegally by human standard. They were doing that. But God, in his foreknowledge, he knew that such a thing would happen. God simply used that their foolishness. He converted their foolishness into raw material. And here are you. Look at you. A full-blown, grown human being. And you are here, created in the image of God. And I see you as a rising star. I see you getting into what God wants you to be. And let me tell your neighbor again, you are not an accident. Tell him, tell him you are not an accident. You are not an accident. Not at all. Don't believe that you are an accident. How am I possessing my point? What is the biblical support? Angel of the Lord still visited. An angel of the Lord started prophesying over Ishmael. Meaning that God is interested in any unborn baby. And let me tell you, are you a young girl? Are you pregnant and you're listening to this? Don't terminate that baby. Don't commit abortion. That which you are carrying is a vessel of God. That which you are carrying, you don't know. He may be the person <laughs> that will be a blessing to you on this earth. He may be the person that will be a general. He may be a person that will bring out your name more than any other person on this earth. Don't ever tamper with that baby. It's not an accident. Not an accident to God. And so, let me tell you. Let me, let me, let me go back to the message. God started speaking. And God said, Behold, you are with a child. You shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord has given heed to your affliction. You know, I don't understand God always. I don't know about you. But my not understanding him always does not stop me from worshipping him. Though I don't understand the decision that God takes sometimes. He is sovereign. He is independently God. I don't, Gide Okodafo doesn't need to understand God for God to be God. You don't need to understand God. Before he will be God. He is already God. Independently God. Fully God. And he takes independent decision. You better queue up and join him. If you rebel. I mean. If you, if, if you, if you say you will not worship him. The moment you are throwing away your Bible. That day 20 new persons are coming in. The moment you say I am not going to be a preacher again. The moment you do that. He is calling 100 persons to replace you. So. Cool down, cool down, cool down, cool down. I say, cool down, cool down, cool down. And he said, The Lord has given heed to your affliction. I don't know why God was still calling it affliction. But God was interested in that baby. I saw Osama bin Laden in verse 2. I saw Osama in verse 2. Are you worried about what is happening in the Middle East today? Are you worried about the Palestinians and Israel not living at peace? Do you know why these things are happening? Simply put, because Abraham refused to say no. That's just, that's just that. All the suicide bombers, Iraq, Palava, Afghanistan, uh, Taliban, all these things, Osama bin Laden, look at the source. Because Abraham, Abraham, Abraham refused to say no. Let me tell you, the decision you take today can affect the posterity. Abraham has died. Sarah died. But today, we are still suffering what they did. That same, what I may call simple decision. Simple decision. Let me tell you, prevent your husband from taking a deadly decision. Prevent your wife from taking a deadly decision. Before I continue with this passage, I just remember how Ananias and Sapphira died. I said, oh, that is the problem of all yes member now. Agreeing everything with your wife. Agreeing everything. Whatever your husband or wife says, you agree. That's the problem. I wish Sapphira would have opposed 
you know, the husband saying, I won't agree. If you do this, I will report to the church. I will expose you. They may temporarily quarrel. There may be temporary misunderstanding. But the, she would have saved the lives of two of them at the end of the day. But in order, she compromised, agreed, corporate iniquity. Remember, I was talking about the debit of corporate iniquity. That looks like a, another topic to preach. Debit of corporate iniquity. Yeah, it's another topic to preach. But let's go on. You see, so they, 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 they agreed. And because they agreed, they died. They perished. Let me tell you. He said, he will be a wild donkey of a man. Are you seeing your summer here? His hand will be against everyone. You know what happened in 9-11? How men were careless enough to plunge aeroplane inside the World Trade Center and Pentagon. People perished. God said his hand will be against everyone. Are you not hearing of suicide bombers? Don't you realize the spontaneous riot we have even in northern part of Nigeria? Sometimes. God said, his hand will be against everyone. His hand will be against civilization. His hand will be against the developed world. That's what the Bible said. Thank God, I thank God that I am a believer. I am a believer in what the word of God says. Because this not, this, the Bible is not just a book. It's not just a holy book. It is the book. I am conscious of the definite article, the. It is only the Bible that has prophecies and fulfilled prophecy. I challenge any other book that has prophecies and fulfilled prophecy. Come and defend yourself. It is the Bible that has prophecies and fulfilled prophecy. These things were written. That we might understand. That we may read the handwriting on the wall. And begin to understand what God said. Now, the Bible said he will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. And he will live in hostility with all his brothers. In hostility. What? Summarily put, Abraham refused to say no. And look at the situation. Why do we have suffering today? I know a lot of preachers say, you will have sweatless prosperity. Ah, even as I'm ministering now, I'm having some sweat. Well, people still believe in sweatless prosperity. Well, I doubt it. I believe in prosperity. But I doubt how sweetless it is. Even to read is not easy. To read is not easy. To go to university, read, do your courses, write your thesis or your, your project. You write and write, your supervisor will use a red pen and cancel it. And you begin afresh. You feel like giving up. You write and write and write. You come and defend. Is it easy to do that? It's not even easy to be a robber. It's not easy. It takes strong men to become arm robbers. It's not easy. You carry gun to somebody's house. You don't know his own security. You don't know how sophisticated the person is. And you're just going. It's not easy to do that. So, but God said that man shall sweat before he eats. Why? What happened? Somebody just spoke to me before I, I, I moved in to preach this message. He said anything that a man does that makes him something in life, that it is not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. Somebody just spoke to me and I noted that. Now let me tell you, let me share with you. Listen, why do we have sway today? Because Eve listen to the voice of the snake. And apart from that, Adam, Adam listen to the voice of Eve. Adam knew. He knew that God said, don't touch that fruit. The wife ate. They saw that the fruit was beautiful to behold. He gave to the husband. And the husband was just there looking. And the husband took, without querying it, without any, any level of resistance. Look at the situation today. We are suffering. Sickness has come because of that. Death has come because of that. Women must be a child in pain. Is there any child that has ever come without pain? Impossible. It may not be to you like it happened with the Egyptian, but you must have pain. Before a baby will cry, a woman must feel pain. And that's why also, I preach a message that to Mr. Dust. It is also the same thing God said, for you are dust. And unto the dust shall you return. You are going to return to the dust. For you are Mr. Dust. These are the reward. Because these people refuse. 
to say what? They refuse to say no. God has led me to talk to you. I don't know the pressure around you. I don't know the pressure around you. The pressure may come from your family. The pressure may come from your office. The pressure may come from somebody who wants to give you a cheap job. Somebody who wants to give you a quick contract. And he wants you to compromise. Listen to me. What is popular may not be right. And what is right may not be popular. Yes, what you compromise to hold, you will lose it at the end of the day. And any relationship cemented with iniquity can never last. Hear me again. What you, what, 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 what you compromise to hold, you will lose it at the end of the day. What is right may not be popular. What is popular may not be right. And listen to me. Any relationship cemented with iniquity will never last. It will never last. You can say no. You can say no. Let me draw your attention to what God said in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1. Just turn your Bibles to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1. Look at what he says. From verse 10. He said, my son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If I will make it relevant to this topic, let me put it this way. If sinners entice you, say no. Say no vehemently to them. And he says, if they say come with us, Let's lie in wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like sure. Even whole, as those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious wealth. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot with us. We shall all have one purse. My son, do not walk in their way with them. In other words, say no. Do you want to live and maintain your integrity? Then you can say no. Do you want to fulfill your destiny? You have to say no. You have to say no. Do you know one key? Sure. How to know a man who will not succeed? is a man who wants to please everyone. A man who will not succeed is a man who is struggling to please everyone. I have discovered that when you want to please everybody, at the end of the day, you end up pleasing no person. And you become a disgrace to yourself. I mean disgrace to yourself. So brother, you can't please everybody. Some decisions you have to take it. You can't run away from such decision. You don't even be at you can't be neutral. God has placed you in a position where you must either say yes or no. There's nothing like hiding said, let me be neutral, eh, but uh, better left, better right. There's nothing like a better left, better right. You must declare. You, you can say no. Listen, you can say no. And you can say no. No! No! We'll become positive many a time. Another leader, if I just say form of leadership, I call Aaronism. Aaronism. Aaron, in the book of Exodus 32, he knew that the demand that the people were making were wrong. You know, it was a wrong uh, demand. He said, make a God, that, uh, make another God, make, uh, make an image for us. That this uh, Moses, who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what has become of it. You remember the golden calf? The golden calf. Aaron knew that the people were wrong. But, he said yes to them. You know, some pastors can compromise as a pastor church so that they can be retained. It will be wrong for you to see evil looming. And you keep quiet. You don't want to offend any person. You don't want to offend any person so that they will not transfer you. That is the day you, declare, you wrote your own transfer letter. That is the day. Because the moment you begin to compromise, the moment you begin to see iniquity, the moment you begin to say things that, 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 that God hates, and you allow those things, thinking that it will cause you to remain, you run into big trouble. Listen to me. What am I trying to say? I'm saying this to say that you can say no. Aaron knew that the people were wrong. But he went ahead, made the golden calf for them. And look at the consequences. It brought death. It brought sorrow. Aaronism. Are you a leader? Are you a leader? You don't bring boys to war. Otherwise they will run away at the sound of the gun. God made you a leader for a purpose. And as a good leader, there's a time to say yes. 
there's also a time to say no. If you're a leader that will always say yes to the people, you run into trouble with God. You will become a disappointment to yourself, a disappointment to God who placed you there. I'm still saying you can say no. Don't be like Aaron. Aaron in Exodus 32, who said yes, compromised, and did what the people wanted, but displeased God. Oh yes. Each time I remember the young prophet who came from Judah, my mind melts. This young man, you know the story very well? In some of my tapes, I, I was able to talk about this young man. But there's an aspect I want to bring that when the old prophet, the old prophet, you know, here was a young man who came from Judah. God's anointing was operating upon him. He went and prophesied while Jeroboam was burning incense on the altar. Jeroboam was angry with him. Jeroboam wanted to arrest him. But when he stretched forth his hand to arrest him, the presence of God electrocuted the hand of the king. And then the king said, come go home with me and eat. And I will give you gifts. The young man said no when he was current with the Holy Ghost. He said no, I won't go. Because God who sent me asked me not to do that. Then the devil brought an old prophet. Spiritually retired. Spiritually retired. You know there are spiritually retired people in the church. Who may still be handling position. But they are spiritually retired. And such people need God. Need to transform such people. Now it happened that the old prophet. He didn't come to church. But he was a ghost member of the church. He didn't come to church. He had representatives in the church who came back and told him all that happened in the church. And he said, saddle my donkey for me. He went after this young man. Unfortunately, he met the young man resting under a tree. Dangers of spiritual vacation. You know, there's no holiday in the spiritual realm. Any moment you want to take a holiday, the devil may take an advantage. It happened that while he was resting, this old prophet came and said, are you the young man who came from Judah? He said, yes, daddy. Then he said, come, go home with me and eat. That's the point I want to bring out. The young man, first of all, said, the Lord told me not to eat, not to return by the same way. But this young man said, an angel, the old prophet said, an angel has spoken to me. Oh, my God. An angel. This young man didn't bother about going back to ask God. He must have said, this is my father and the Lord. They started the prophetic ministry before we came into the sea. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe God has changed his mind. He joined. He ate. Oh my God. Jesus. Why they sat down to eat and to drink. Genuine prophecy came from this same man. And he said, Thus says the Lord. Because you have rebelled against the word of the Lord your God. You've gone to eat where you shouldn't eat. And drink where you shouldn't drink. Your cups will not go home. He wanted to respect an old man, a senior. He wanted to obey the voice of Sarah. I was talking to you a while ago about somebody who find it difficult to say no to. Somebody who find it difficult to, I mean, oh my God. Listen to me. If you want your life to be controlled by public opinion, you will hit the, the rock at the end of the day. Listen to me. Are you wanting your life to be controlled by public opinion? You will hit the rock at the end of the day. When they started eating, genuine prophets, he said, Behold, you will not go home, sir. When the young man arose, a lion met him, terminated his ministry. Why? He did not say no. Oh my God. 
when it comes to destiny. And you know, as I'm talking to you, I, I feel the presence of God. And, and uh, let me tell you something. Did you hear anything from God, Pastor? Brother? Is there anything the Lord has told you? You are responsible for what God told you. If there's somebody around you, can you? I mean, tap, tap the person. Talk, touch the person. Tell the person. You are responsible for what God told you. You are responsible. Don't tell me, it is this man, it is the other person, they didn't allow me to fulfill my vision. Let's turn. If, even if you are a pastor, and you are there pastoring a church, you can't implement your vision because of what one person or the other person is saying. You better resign. Come on, resign. Move out of that place. It's a dangerous thing for you to remain in a position. And the ministry is not moving forward. And you are still there occupying the position. This is not ordinary profession where you focus on receiving your money. You are a child of destiny. You can say no. You can say no. You can say no to save your future. This young man, he perished this way. Somebody may deceive you today and repent on the day of your funeral. And God will still accept the person. I don't even understand why God will also use the, the same person to prophesy. But he did. Jesus. I've been able to see people who negatively they said yes when they should have said no. Look at what happened to Adam. Look at what happened to Eve. Look at what happened to Abraham and Sarah. Look at what happened to Aaron. Look at what happened even to this young prophet. I want to take you to people who said no positively. I can't forget the Rechabite. In Jeremiah chapter 35. Jeremiah called them and said, Thus says the Lord, Drink ye wine. You know, if it were today, Jeremiah would be an international prophet. If it were today. Because he's a very great prophet. Can you imagine the international prophet taking them inside the prophetic chambers? Telling them, Thus says the Lord, Drink ye wine. Hey! This Rechabite, they said, Sir, we respect you. Sir, we know that you are a man from God. Sir, we know that God has been speaking through you. But sir, excuse us. We will not drink wine. For our father, our father warned us never, never to drink wine. Oh my God. And the Lord called Jeremiah. I said, Jerry, do you see how the sons of Rekha take tenaciously to the instructions of their human father? Why wouldn't my own people? Why wouldn't my own people obey my instruction? God, give us the Rekha by. Give us strong men who will hold on to the ancient landmark. Who will say, no matter what I see in the television, no matter what I read in the books, no matter what I listen in the tape, I won't change my standard. God cannot change his standard because of the changing world. Generations will come and go. Kingdoms will rise and fall. But the word of God is still the same from generation to generation. It cannot change. Look at, look at the billion. The billion Christians. After everything, they will go back to cross check. Let me tell you. Now, let me give you one. I advise every person. This is no more a time when you sit in the church. Anything any person say from the pulpit, you say amen. Don't say amen to anything. Everything that somebody say. Check very well. Cross check. Tell your neighbor, cross check before you say amen. Confirm. Confirm in the scripture. Before you say amen. Amen means you are in agreement. Don't just say amen to anything until you are sure of what the person has said and what the person is saying. My message today is still saying you can say no. You can say no, no to maintain your integrity. Do you want to go to heaven? Then you can say no sometimes. You got to say no. The Rechabite. They check the scriptures to know whether those things are still as they are still true. And let me tell you, you can say no to the voice you are hearing. The voice of the devil. 
you can say no to strange desire. Look at what Joseph did. That my champion of righteousness. He was pressured and persuaded by that woman. And Joseph said no. Joseph said, how can I do this wickedness against my God? Joseph said no. But sometimes you can, if you say no, the consequences may be there. It can cause you to go to prison. But you will not remain in the prison forever. Even if you are sent to the prison because you said no, God will bring you out and promote you. And the promotion shall be double. I don't know. You can say no. What are they telling you in the office? What is the pressure? Are they coming to bribe you? To do injustice? Hear the message. You can say no. Politician, are they taking you where you go and make sacrifice? Where you go to juju? Because of political prowess. Listen to this message. You can say no. Are they telling you to compromise? Are they telling you to shed blood? Promising you fake protection? You can say no. Young man, is there a pressure from your family? Because your wife has not been able to deliver. Your wife has not been able to be pregnant. And your wife, your, your family, people who are uncircumcised, they are telling you what to do to go and marry another person. Hear the word of God. You can say no. I say, you can say no. Are they arranging a marriage for you abroad? Is there any arranging marriage abroad? Getting somebody who is not circumcised, trying to pursue you to the person, whether in America, whether in Europe, and let me tell you, you can say no. What you compromise to get, you will lose at last. Hear me, hear me again. What you compromise to get, you will lose a lot. We have had stories of people who, they did that, but at the end of the day, remember the debit of corporate iniquity. Debit of corporate iniquity. Is there any voice you're hearing telling you to go and kill? You can say no. Is there any voice talking to you, asking you not to forgive? You can say no. Oh yes. Yes, you can say no to strange voices. It is time to say no. It is time to come out openly. It is time to declare your stand. It is time to resist. The Bible did not tell you to argue with the devil. For the devil has over 6,000 years experience in argument. When you get into argument with the devil, he may defeat you. But the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. You can say no to inordinate desire. You can say no. The voice that tells you to go after other men. To go after other women. Other women, other men's wives. You can say no. The voice that tells you to go and run after your master's money. You can say no. Some years ago, I had a voice. Let me repeat this testimony. It's relevant to what I'm saying. A young man told me, well, when we asked him, why are you stealing? He said, whenever I sit down like this, a voice speaks to me. Take, take. Take, take. Take, take. You know, you must hear a voice that will tell you to do something that God hates. But let me tell you this day. You can say no. I was reading someone. A lot of you like to choose some passages of someone. They don't want to take the whole, comp the whole passage. Someone said, blessed is that man. Someone, that's one, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor sit in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. If I will interpret this or contextualize it, relevant to my topic, I will say, Blessed is that man who knows how to say no to the counsel of the wicked. Who knows how to say... Now, you know, people you are moving with can influence you. If you begin to walk with a man who talks abroad, abroad, you begin to think abroad, abroad. If you walk with a man who talks academics, academic, you begin to think academics, academic. If you walk with a man who talks reviver, reviver, you begin to think reviver, reviver. But if you walk with a pessimist, a man you will ask, how are you today? And he will tell you, no trouble yet. Then it will influence your mentality. You can say no. Say no to evil influence. Say no. And let me tell you something in your life. I speak to you by the authority of the word of God from this moment. Anything the father has not planted in your life shall be rooted out. Any relationship that God has not planted in your life I want to agree with you today, they shall be rooted out. You will say no to evil relationship. 
you will say no to relationship that will not augment you. You will say no to relationship that will not help you make heaven. You will say no to relationship that is bringing you down. Relationship that is reducing you. Hey! 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 It is time to say no! God is speaking! It is time to say no. You can no longer keep quiet. Anything that will not help you move forward, say no to it. I said say no to it. Any relationship that will not help you move forward, you better say no to it. Don't keep quiet until you are swallowed. Don't keep quiet until you compromise. Don't keep quiet until you are conquered. Don't keep quiet. You can say no. And he says, But his delight is in the Lord of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. And look at your promise because you say no to evil. You will be like a tree firmly planted in streams of water. Which yield its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does. He prosper. Whatever. Whatever he does. We prosper. This is the promise of God. When you begin to say no to what is not according to the vision you have received from God. And when you begin to say no to iniquity and sin. When you begin to say no to compromise. God says, whatever you do, anything you do, anything you do, anything you do, shall now prosper. And they will prosper. And they will prosper. That's the word of God. Let me tell you another aspect. Do you know you can also say no to death? You can say no to death. I don't know how the spirit of death is trying to room about your family. Ah, you got to be positive. You got to rise up and declare prayers. Church, if you agree in prayer and resist that death, God will confirm you. David said no to death. How did he do that? He said, I would have fainted. Let me come. Let me put it this way. I would have fainted when the lab result came out. I would have fainted when the X-ray result came out. Except that I believe that I'm not dying now. <laughs> that I will see the goodness of the Lord. Not in millennium. In the land of the living. Oh my God. You can say no to the handwriting of the devil on your business. David even say, All nations surround me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Let me put it this way. All nations surround me, but in the name of the Lord, I say no to them. You push me violently that I might fall, but I say no to you, I won't fall. And he say, I shall not die. Which means, I say no to death. Say no to death. There are people when they become sick, they say, day, 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 day. Nonsense. Why are you calling upon death? Say no. Resist the death. He will flee. You can say no to death. Oh, my brother. You can. David said, I shall not die. But I will live to declare the glory of God. You can say no to sickness. That sickness is an illegal occupant. You can say no to it. You can resist it. Just like you can resist temptation, you can also resist sickness like that. You can resist the poverty. You can say no to it. Where I read this morning in my, in my, um, in my morning devotion, the Bible was talking about, I think it's in Proverbs chapter 20. It was talking about and it said that, um, you, you, that, uh, when you love sleep, poverty will be your portion. When you love sleep. You know, there are a lot of ways you can resist poverty. By resisting laziness, you are resisting poverty. Saying no to laziness. Say, because any person who will oversleep will not accomplish his vision. If you like sleep so much, you can't accomplish your vision. You can say no. Say no to gossip. Say no to gossip. Resist the gossip. Let everybody know that, I mean, you are not a party to gossip. You are not interested in gossip. You will see gossipers will begin to run away from you. Say no. You can say no. You can say no. You can say no to the handwriting of the devil. You can say no. God knows. You can say no. I want you to pause 
Even as I pour. Some of the mistakes I have personally made in life. They happened in my life. Simply because. I said yes when I should have said no. What about you? Can you make a reflection now? Can you think about your life? Can you think about all the things you're passing through? Why not be plain? Why not be transparent? Tell the person. No. No. Say no. Instead of eating, a young man will be giving you money. Giving you money. You are eating. You are eating. Eating the money. You won't even tell him, no, I won't marry you. You will be the darling. You know? And the young man will be deceived into thinking that uh, you will eventually say yes. And after, at the end of the day, you must have played 419 on the man. It would have saved you that you said no initially. So that the young man will find his way. A lot of things. You can say no. Oh God. Make us to become transparent. That we may be. No, instead of pretending. Say no so that the man will say. We know. Say no. Why are you asking somebody to come to your office? Every day. Come. He said come again. Come again. Come again. Come again. Come again. And you know in your heart. You don't want to give him what he's looking for. And you don't want to say no. The message is all encompassing. It looks like I'm preaching a scattered message this day. And any PC that comes upon you and falls on you, you know it belongs to you. You can say no. You can say no. Let's get back. I wish Abraham had said no. This society this our war, this our generation wouldn't have become like that. I want you to bow your heads. Let's pray. Oh, I want you to ask God, say, forgive me for my inability to say no. I have ruined, I have spoiled, I mean, a lot of things have fallen apart because of that. That you can make a U-turn. A change can zoom into your life. God is speaking to you. You can say no. Don't be watching. Don't just be at the corner. Looking at your husband. Make a, a deadly mistake. Looking at your wife. Make a deadly mistake. Looking at your boss. Make a deadly mistake. You can say no. You can say no. Our Father, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. We worship you for this solemn moment. Father, this message is supposed to be a message of reflection. We have made mistakes. We've caused havoc in our lives. Because we said yes. Daily God, voices speak to us. There are pressures from the left and right, from family, from friends. Pressure for us to compromise. Pressure for us to lose our consecration. But Lord, according to your word this day, give us the strength to say no. Give us the strength to resist. Give us strength to say no and no and no. Father, even as we are praying this day, we say no to death in our life. We say no to death looming in our family. We say no to that sickness. We say no. We resist death. Spirit of the living God, I pray that we will cause us to fulfill our destiny. To the glory of your Holy Name. Be thou exalted, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, um, I, I just give glory to God for the privilege of sharing this message with you. 
I am your brother Chidi Okoraf, and we are available for revival and conferences. Our office is 2 Ekuruke Street, Post Office Box 1990, Omaha, Nigeria. And our telephone number is 088 224 109 or 080 330 76980. And um, our email is chidiokoraf at hotmail.com. Chidiokoraf at hotmail.com. Or A-G-O-D-I 64 at yahoo.com. We are available. You can call us. We can pray with you. You can write us. Our heart desire is that God will cause us to you know, make heaven at the end of the day. And uh, you've got to maintain your integrity. And I know if you're not born again, you've got to be born again because if you're not born again, you cannot be courageous enough to say no to evil. But God is giving you the grace. There's a song that says, a song that talks about give us the strength to be true. There is a race that we must run. There is a race that we must run. There are no's we must say. <laughs> if we must make heaven, there are no's we must say. Let me put it that way. So, so listen to this message. I am your partner. You are a revival partner. God has much in stock. Remember, my telephone number is 88 224 080-330-76980. Remember, if you are calling from international, if you are calling outside Nigeria, it is 234. That's our nation code number. Then you put 88, then 224-109 or 234-80-330-76980. God bless you abundantly. Thank you.